Rockies have a little trouble with it, and uh, also they just can't seem to quite hang on, but we'll see what happens here in the mile. Palance joined track announcer Dan Lozell. Standing quietly behind the gate for uh, jockey uh, Gerald Mosse, and just moving forward now. All set. They're at the post. Uh, they're off in the auto mile. And breaking quickly in between horses, Quiet Resolve. Quiet Resolve grabs here we lead Cape Cross and Robin Jen, those white blinkers. Coming on quickly at the hedge as they cross over the tunnel. Robin Jen has the early lead. Quiet Resolve. Dottori has Cape Cross up close early. Jim and Tonic in amongst horses. Uh, currently fourth. Garbu is at the hedge in fifth. Bomb Fim is sixth. Ward Smith is seventh. Uh, Chargé de Fed is uh, currently in eighth position. Silic down on the hedge for Corey Nakatani. Hawksley Hill. Pat Day has him out of trouble. Back about ten lengths off the lead. Uh, then uh, Kara Kool and Incitatis. A Poteen. A second to last is a lonesome dude and trailing this field is Sky Colony. And it's Robin Jin. Robin Jin leads by two lengths. Garbu improves to the inside second. Cape Cross is right there in a the third position. Toward the inside looking for running room is a Silic. On the outside is a quiet resolve as they come to the top of the stretch of Woodbine. It's gut check time for Robin Jin. Robin Jin has the lead. Quiet Resolve is on the outside, and they are fanning out Garbu. Jerry Bailey sets that one down. Cape Cross has asked for his best by Dottori. Hawksley Hill absolutely exploding down the center of this turf course. It is Quiet Resolve, and on the inside, Robin Jim. But Hawksley Hill on the outside forges to the front of the 16th pole. They're running out of ground. Here comes Jim and Tonic. It's going to be a tight one. Hawksley Hill in a thriller. Then Quiet Resolve and uh, Robin Jim, Jim and Tonic and uh, Silk. Then uh, further back we had uh, Cape Cross and uh, Poteen, followed by Garbu, who gave it up late. N.C. Tottis and Bomb Fim, Lord uh, Smith, uh, back to uh, Lonesome Dude and Kara Cool. Then uh, Sky Colony, last under the line, Chargé de Fair. The running time, 1.33, one fifth of a second, one fifth of a second off the course record. Let's go back downstairs. And Randy, what a huge sigh of relief for trainer Neil Drysdale. Hawksley Hill finally overcoming his inability to win this year, taking the million dollar Addo Mile for his first victory since October of 98. In his last race, he was particularly disappointing in the Eddie Reed, but he bruised a foot in that race, as we heard earlier. And now in this race, Neil Drysdale switches to Pat Day, hoping to make just a little bit of difference in Hawksley Hill. That's all it would take. He's been losing a lot by heads and noses, and he hangs a little bit here when he gets to the lead. But Pat Day, with that left-handed stick windmilling, going to work there, he manages to have enough to hold off the long shot local there. The number one horse, the lightly raced, quiet resolve. Really a good showing, Sandra, for the Canadian yes. team. And Neil Drysdale's just got a lot coming to Woodbine. Real quick. I think his horse got a 316th of a mile solid punch. Good acceleration. When you now we're seeing him on the replay here, Pat, and he rolls up to the lead, and he looks like he's going to blow by. And maybe he did. He feel like to you that he might have been hanging just a little bit. He had to work on him extra hard there at the end. Well, he was. I tell you what, he gives you that punch, and then just gets a little leg weary. I don't think he's hanging. He's up into the air when he's hit with it, and also comes over and tightens him up considerably there. Now it could be either. Probably the tightening up there, the last part of it is what they're talking about. But it looked to me like the horse also caught a little whip in the face, and Pat is doing a little talking right now. You know, in some of these big stakes races, though, stewards around North America, around the world, actually, are pretty reluctant to disqualify horses in big races like this unless it's something very, very blatant, Sandra. So right now, the stewards are looking at head on. It's worth my horse was running a big race, and, you know, I just wanted to try and head goes up and that is the cause here according to the stewards for the disqualification of Hawksley Hill and when you disqualify a horse according to the rules of racing you have to put him behind the horse that he interfered with so Hawksley Hill therefore even though he won the race or he finished first officially now will be fourth behind Jim and Tonic. 
And now a salute from Corbell Champagne, which has been part of America's great events and celebrations for over 117 years. Corbell proudly toasting the winner of the Atto Wood by Mile. Quiet results. $1,100, the trifecta, one six nine. 10,204, and that's with Robin, Jen, and Jim and Tani, second and third. Let's go to Janine. Well, making Canada proud today for sure is trainer Mark Frostad and Jackie Robert Landry. Mark, I'll start with you. This horse came back from a serious injury to be two for two going into this race. What a remarkable training job to pull this off. Well, it's probably a blessing in disguise. He, uh, he had a fractured pasture in last year, and he had a whole year off. And um, he was a while coming around, and uh, when he did get back, he's, uh, he's a fresh horse. And